festival. Several years ago, I was invited to play at the Woody Guthrie Folk Festival. And it's held in Okima, Oklahoma, which is Woody's hometown. So it's very, very special. There's only one drawback. It's held in July. <laughs> it was 118 degrees every day. It's a dry heat. <laughs> it's brutal. And, you know, and if you go to this festival as an attendee, you have to either camp or stay in an RV because it's a very small town and there's only one motel, the OK Motel. <laughs> and that's where they put the artists. So you, there's no other place to stay. Now, granted, a lot of the concerts are at night at the fairgrounds, so it's, you know, it's much cooler. It's about 105. <laughs> but, but I got to play in the old theater downtown where Woody had played, so that was like, uh, to be on that same stage just sent chills. Oh, and the nice thing for the artists is they would cart us around between the OK Motel and the venues in an air-conditioned van. So we would be fresh, always. So the last day I was there, I was downtown, and I was listening to a, a wonderful singer-songwriter that I love, a man by the name of Joel Raphael. So I was listening to him, and I was very moved by his performance, and I felt really inspired. So I decided I would walk the three miles back to the motel. <laughs> and in my heat stroke, this song appeared. Like a mirage. <laughs> but it was great. I mean, I'm walking down the street, and it, it was, it's one of those old farm towns with a really wide main street so that you can turn your wagon around or your buggy on Sundays. And it reminded me of the town where my grandparents lived when they retired from farming, a little town in southern Minnesota called Keister, which is an unfortunate name for a town. <laughs> We've lost so many of those small towns because as goes the farm, so goes the town. So I'm, I'm thinking about that and I'm, I'm thinking about Keister. And, and my grandparents, when they retired, they lived on a little house on one end of Main Street that was called U-Turn Corner because that's all there was to do in Keister. <laughs> but our cousin Kenny had a pool hall on the other end of Main Street. And my grandfather uh, in, his, in his 80s, in his retirement, was the breakfast cook at the, at the pool hall. He cooked for all the farmers, very proudly so. He was proud to be the oldest man in Keister. Now, Norwegians tend to live very long lives, don't you know? And I think it's because they eat food that's all the same color. <laughs> Off-white. But not a hint of spice. But truly, my family is very long-lived. Our grandparents were 96 and 98 when they passed away, and they had 11 children. And the last two were twins. And my grandfather used to say, we knew it was time to quit when they started coming in twos. <laughs> <laughs> Our oldest living relative was great Aunt Gertie, was 105 when she passed away. And Uncle Udvin was, was 102, Claire's father was 102. He danced till he was 100. And he lost his hearing at 102. And if he couldn't dance to music or hear music, I mean, that was his life. He was a beautiful dancer and loved music, as most of the family does. And then there was Aunt Burnett, who died at 103, and she was pretty crazy. She drove a stick shift Volkswagen until she was 90, and then they took her license away <laughs> because she would have driven till the end, which might have come sooner. <laughs> and then Uncle Glenn passed away last year at 99, I believe, right? I think, yeah, and he was still living in Keister at home. Just an amazing family. So my father now is the oldest at 95, and then Aunt Burdell is two years younger, and then the Minnesota twins just turned 90. So, great family. And I hope I live that long. I hope I will. But I am half Italian. And we die of holding grudges, so. <laughs> Oh, the streets are so wide You can diagonally park In that small town In that small town Yeah, the streets are so wide But 
the theater has gone dark in that small town in that small town where your business is everybody's business and everybody's nose is in your business and everybody knows more than you wish they did in that small small town so that's your part when it comes around and the concrete's so worn there are cracks for every year of that small town of that small town and when the mercantile closed everybody was in tears in that small town Oh, that small town and our parents grew old and the kids all moved away from that small town oh, that small town with no prospects in sight there's no reason to stay in a small town a very small town where your business is everybody's business and everybody's nose is in your business and everybody knows more than you wish they did in that small small town nice My cousin Kenny owned the pool hall where Grandpa cooked each day in that small town, in that small town, making breakfast for the farmers in conversation by the way, in that small town, in that small town. And my grandpa would brag, though bragging's not the way of a small town a small town I'm the oldest man around here and I walk five miles a day in this small town mm -hmm. where your business is everybody's business and everybody's nose is in your business and everybody knows more than you wish they in that small, small town. Ooh, hear the whistle blow as the train rolls by, as the train rolls by. And oh, it don't stop here anymore. Well, it's a piece of our history and it's a part of our past the small town the small town but like all things worth saving there's a chance that it won't last the small town the very small town where your business is everybody's business and everybody's nose is in your business and everybody knows more than you wish they did in that small, small town. Thank you for singing. Very beautiful. Thank you.